White House serves as the President of the United States Official House and Office. Every American president since John Adams did so in 1800 has lived there, at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C. The president and his advisors are frequently referred to as the White House in conversation. Neoclassical architect James Hoban, who was Irish-born, created the house. Hoban based the structure's design on Dublin's Leinster House, which currently serves as home to the Wariactas, the country's legislature. Between 1792 and 1800, construction took place utilizing white-painted Aquia Creek sandstone. With the assistance of the architect Benjamin Henry Latrobe, Thomas Jefferson erected modest colonnades on either wing of the home when he moved there in 1801, hiding stables and storage. The home was burned down by the British Army in the burning of Washington in 1814, causing significant exterior charring as well as interior devastation during the War of 1812. President James Monroe moved into the partially rebuilt executive residence in October 1817, shortly after reconstruction got underway. The semicircular south portico and the north portico were added to the outside in 1824 and 1829, respectively, as part of ongoing work. President Theodore Roosevelt ordered the relocation of all work offices to the newly built West Wing in 1901 due to congestion within the presidential mansion itself. President William Howard Taft extended the West Wing eight years later, in 1909, and built the first Oval Office, which was later relocated as the area was expanded. In 1927, the third-floor attic of the main mansion, Executive Residence, was transformed into residential space by adding long shed dormers to the hip roof. Social events were hosted in the newly built East Wing, which was connected to the old wings by Jefferson's colonnades. In 1946, the East Wing modifications were finished, adding more office space. The home's load-bearing wood beams and walls were deemed to be in danger of failing by 1948. The interior rooms were completely demolished under Harry S. Truman, and an entirely new internal load-bearing steel structure was built inside the walls. The Truman balcony was added to the exterior. The internal rooms were reconstructed after the structural work was done. The current White House complex is made up of the Executive Residence, the West Wing, the East Wing, the Eisenhower Executive Office Building, formerly the State Department, now housing the offices for the President's staff and the Vice President, and Blair House, a guest house. The ground floor, state floor, second floor, third floor, and a two-story basement make up the six stories that make up the Executive Residence. The building is a piece of the President's Park and a National Heritage Site owned by the National Park Service. On the American Institute of Architects 2007 list of America's favorite architecture, it came in second place, 5. For more than two centuries, the White House has stood as a symbol of democracy and resilience in the face of change, a symbolism that carries particular poignance following the turmoil of the 2020 election and its aftermath. The stories embedded in its decor, artwork, hallways, and chambers capture colorful moments and occasional upheavals in American history. Known as the Executive Mansion or President's House during its first century, the building has been burned, rebuilt, shored up, after a tinkling chandelier warned of some structural instability, renovated, and expanded into the complex we know today. John Adams was the first resident of the house in 1800. George Washington lived in Philadelphia most of his presidency, while staying heavily involved in the design and construction of the new federal home. Thomas Jefferson had his office in what is now part of the state dining room. In 1886, Grover Cleveland was married in the Blue Room, the same space where James Monroe had tea and cake with Native American leaders from the Great Plains some six decades earlier. The White House was a treasure trove of Lewis Comfort Tiffany furnishings under Chester A. Arthur, a magnificent colored glass screen that the famed designer made for the entrance hall is one of many relics lost to history. The West Wing and Compound were mostly established by Theodore Roosevelt's directive for a comprehensive refurbishment by McKim, Meade, and White in 1902. He gave it the title White House as well. 
The substance of the White House and its mission have persisted through changing eras and leaders, even if the outward appearances have changed. A portrait of Franklin D. Roosevelt has been hung over the mantle in the Oval Office, and President Biden has also brought in other historical busts and paintings that express his goals for the nation. Of course, he has maintained the fabled Resolute Desk, which was made from the planks of a 19th century British exploration ship. The White House's distinctive history and other features provide us a glimpse into how the working mansion represents both continuity and change. steady as she goes. Since Rutherford B. Hayes, most presidents have used the Resolute Desk, a gift from Queen Victoria in 1880. Oak from HMS Resolute is used to build the half-ton desk. The ship was part of an expedition launched in 1852 to look for lost explorer Sir John Franklin, who perished along with more than 100 men in an unsuccessful attempt to find the Northwest Passage. The ship was specially designed for Arctic exploration. After being abandoned, Resolute was discovered three years later by an American whaler drifting among ice floes in the Davis Strait. She received a makeover and was ceremoniously returned to England. Years later, as the Queen's heavyweight gift to President Hayes, some of her timbers were brought back to America. The first president to put it in the Oval Office was John F. Kennedy. It's not actually white. According to Matthew Costello, senior historian at the White House Historical Association, the White House is actually off-gray and was constructed from sandstone quarried nearby. The house was slightly lighter in 1798 when stonemasons whitewashed it to preserve the porous stone from the elements. For years after the British destroyed the old home, in 1818, lead-based paint's brilliant white color made its appearance. Over time, there were so many paint layers that it took 16 years to remove them all during a significant restoration process that was completed in 1996. It takes 570 gallons of paint to cover one layer. 10 pin under the north portico. Even presidents require enjoyment. Harry Truman erected two lanes in the basement of the White House as the first owner of the bowling alley. He also let the White House employees to establish a bowling league despite not being a particularly good bowler, claims Costello. When he assumed office in the 1950s, Dwight Eisenhower found more useful uses for the area and turned it into a central filing and communications room, while Truman's bowling alley was dismantled and reassembled across the street, beneath the enormous building now known as the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. Then Nixon entered the scene. He enjoyed bowling late at night, particularly to distract himself, according to Costello. A single, exclusive bowling alley was eventually built for him inside the White House, beneath the North Portico, where it is still located today. The Actual Media Pool Everything excellent has to come to an end. The press briefing room, a less glamorous but no less significant area of the White House, is located beneath the indoor pool created for polio-stricken Franklin D. Roosevelt, just as the area containing Truman's bowling alley grew into what is now the Situation Room. Costello predicts that it won't ever be utilized as a pool again. However, it hasn't prevented the Inquisitive from looking it over. A second staircase now serves the purpose that was once a trap door with a steel ladder at the presidential podium. He continues, it's almost like a tradition. Press personnel and members of the White House staff will sign their names on the pool tiles. Some claim that the chlorine smell is still present. Saving the portrait from the British. Few relics from the White House's earlier years remain today. British troops destroyed the White House and the Capitol in 1814 after winning the Battle of Bladensburg in the War of 1812. Gilbert Stewart's famous 1797 picture of George Washington, which First Lady Dolly Madison famously requested be saved before she departed, is one of the only survival. Paul Jennings, a slave, and an Irish gardener were among the party that removed the image from its frame and carried it away. 
According to Costello, the Irish gardener placed it on a wagon and transported it out of the city. The complete image, which now hangs in the east room of the reconstructed mansion, was brought back there in 1817. Then there are the secret passages. So, do they exist? Yes and no, says Costello coyly. Naturally, I can only discuss those that are known to the general audience. This contains the President's Emergency Operations Center, an underground command center that was hinted at in 2015 photos of George W. Bush and senior staff on September 11th. Its roots can be found in a bomb shelter that was constructed beneath the White House in the wake of Japan's 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. According to Costello, historical claims regarding Abraham Lincoln having private tunnels have been disproved.